So, uh, we have the four uh, main demos, notebook one to, to, to four. The notebook zero is just a reference uh, from Sealed and explain how we build all these uh, uh, blocks here uh, and there, the acquisition data, image data, and data containers. And we will start with uh, Evelina that will uh, introduce uh, a little bit of tomography, run uh, FPB reconstruction, and CGLS. Then we will go to Ticon of regularization and introduce the block framework. Then we will run uh, real data from the diamond light source, and then go to the uh, PDHT and run a total variation reconstruction. In the afternoon session, we will do uh, again uh, total variation reconstruction for multispectral uh, data by line work. So, Evelina, you want to start? Any questions? Okay. Can you stop sharing? Yeah. Do you want this? Not normative. Uh, good morning, everyone. Can you hear me fine? fine? So, in this next exercise, we will be doing uh, it's obviously number two, uh, so that's the one we're going to be doing. It's about uh, the classical Tikhonov type regularization. So um, in the previous exercise, the main iterative algorithm we looked at was CGLS. And uh, as Evelina was explaining, CGLS is based on the least squares formulation. We run a number of iterations. If we run enough, we will see convergence to this solution, but we may not want to go all the way because we'll have a lot of noise coming into our image, which is why we need to, to stop early, basically. So there's a regularizing effect of stopping early. Now, with, with Tick Enough, we're making that a bit more explicit. Um, so this is the notebook you'll be doing. I'm just skipping through. Instead of just looking at a least squares problem, and many of you will be familiar with this, of course, instead of just looking at the least squares problem, we'll have this other term, the regularization term, which is adding a penalty on uh, big values in, in, some, uh, in some measure. So the simplest thing we can do is to just penalize large pixel values. We will, we will have that if we put an identity operator as the L. So that's just going to put a penalty uh, on, on big pixel values. So we will have a trade-off basically between fitting the data, which is done by the first term, and uh, penalizing uh, whatever penalty we've put here. And, and the alpha here has the role of the regularization parameter, which is governing this, uh, this trade-off between the two. So in, in, uh, it's a non-negative number. If we just put it to zero, we, would, we can see we would lose that term and be back to just the least squares problem. Whereas if you make it very large, if you make it close to infinity, basically that means ignore the data and just minimize that penalty, which will oftentimes just make it completely flat or all the way to zero. Um, so somewhere between zero and infinity, we need to find a, a regularization parameter. And uh, so that's instead of playing with the number of iterations, we, we, we typically need to find this, this regularization parameter. So um, in the cell, we have, um, we have what we call the block framework, which is essentially a way to, to write block matrices and, and, and concatenate vectors or concatenate data containers like that. So, so it turns out you can take your, your Tekhanov problem here and you can rewrite it in this way, where we have stacked the, the A matrix and the alpha times the L operator we've picked. The same image is here, and then we, we have this, this new uh, concatenated data vector. And by doing it that way, it turns out we've now recovered, if we define a new 
matrix here, this one, and a new data uh, vector here. We basically have a least squares problem in A tilde and B tilde, meaning that, well, that's what, what CGLS solves for us. So we can, if we can construct that, we can, we can formulate our least squares problem like that, and then we can feed that into CGLS. So this is done with, with what we call the blame block framework in, 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 uh, in SIL, and this is what, what the exercise guides you through setting that up, doing that where um, the regularizing operator is the identity initially, and then after that you go to having the, the gradient as being the um, regularizing operator, which is again actually a, a block um, operator. So that's, that's it, basically. We have a couple of learning objectives for this one. So the idea is that you will work through the, the, the notebook and you will, uh, by the end of it, you will have seen how to construct and manipulate these block operators and block data containers you need in order to implement Tikhonov, uh, including doing the adjoint, uh, the direct and adjoint operations. And you will, you will put that together to form this Tikhonov regularization problem, solve it with the CGLS algorithm, and you will see how to apply that to uh, tomographic reconstruction, compare that with just plain CGLS, and play with the regularization parameters, see the effect of um, increasing or decreasing the amount of regularization. So a, a, an important point here is that we now want to solve the problem till convergence. We want to let CGLS run for enough iterations. We don't want to stop early because our regularizing effect is now more explicit in, in the choice of the regularization parameter, unlike plain CGLS where we stopped early. So that's the idea. Any questions at this point? Again, we do have two versions of the notebook. Most of it will be for just stepping through more or less, but there is a solution version. If you want to uh, look into that, you can. I just wanted to add that there are some, some uh, part where it's about this block framework and then at the end you'll get to do thick enough with the gradient operator in there. I'd encourage you to maybe initially step quite quickly through the block framework stuff and then have a go at playing with the gradient regularized uh, thick enough which is, which is at the end and play with the parameter and see the line profiles and so on before we wrap up. Then you can come back if you if you want to have a closer look at the block framework. Yeah. Uh, we need to use our block framework. So we need to set up our block operator here, combining our A, and we can see we can multiply apply a scalar onto our L uh, operator, our gradient operator here. And similarly setting up the, um, the block data container for the, for the right hand side, if you like, and then carry on just feeding that, the block versions into that same CDLS algorithm we were using before and running, we see now that our objective is settling down on some, some value here. So, so hopefully that means that we have seen it, it converge to the solution we were after. And again, depending on the regularization parameter you've picked, you will see some, some trade-off between getting rid of the noise but preserving, preserving enough, enough details. So I have a couple of different ones here. Maybe you've seen them as well, so comparing the, the original ground truth image and just running CTLS with a, oh, I think it's yeah, a reasonably high number of iterations, you get still lots of noise in there. Whereas when you start changing to the identity and especially with the gradient, you're able to get rid of much more of that noise. And if you look at the line profiles, you will see how we've, this is a central uh, line profile how CTLS has lots of noise in there, but once you, start, once you start doing the regularization, you get rid of some of that noise. Unfortunately, that does mean since we are penalizing large values, we are losing some contrast, and still we have quite a bit of noise on the, on the image. With the gradient, it's a little bit better. We're not losing as much contrast, 
and the noise is, is also reduced more. But if you, if you further increase the regularization parameter, you will start um, losing a bit more contrast. Um, so maybe you, you tried changing it to, to quite large and you will have seen the image becomes very smooth. So the edges will be blurred at, at some point. Um, yeah, so this was basically the tick enough exercise. Um, the fourth one will have will be using TV regularisa regularization, where we, I guess the motivation for that is, well, we still want to, to try and lose some of our noise, but we also want to try and preserve our edges a bit better, uh, which, is, which is tricky with, with tick enough. Um, so we'll get to that in the fourth exercise. Any questions, comments at this point? <laughs> 